Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, a source for everything One Piece, and today we are back in Theoryland, but not like the nice part of Theoryland where all of the wealthy Theory lawyers and Theory doctors live. No, 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 no. I'm talking the slums of Theoryland where the really weird and overlooked stuff resides. Because examining good theories is interesting and all, but you guys can go to any other One Piece YouTuber for that. So instead, we are here to highlight the obscure, left field, and downright insane fan theories that One Piece has to offer us. Now, before we start, this episode will have a special guest being my my wife, who has a fan theory of her own, despite not actually being a One Piece fan. And she'll be on a bit later, but we are going to play a bit of a game here. So basically, I'm going to tell you what her theory is about, and I'm going to give you three potential answers. And all you have to do is choose the answer that you think would be the right one, and bam, success! However, if you choose the wrong answer, then you need to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, so it really is a win-win situation here. But basically, my wife has a theory on why Nami's breasts continue to grow, and one of these three options is her reasoning behind that. Do they keep growing because A, she's pregnant, B, that's where she hoards all of her money, or C, every time she gets angry, the tension moves directly to her chest. And Nami gets angry quite often. So uh, yeah, tense angry boobs is what we're calling this one. So make your choice now, leave it in a comment below, and we'll get back to this one in a bit. But for now, let's explore some crazy theories. The giant locked up straw hat is Luffy's from when he traveled back in time. All right. So we're starting off just about as insane as we could possibly get by immediately moving to time travel. And you know what? I'm seeing this Luffy time travel business pop up a lot more commonly in the last few weeks with some people claiming that Luffy is Roger and even that Luffy is Joy Boy himself, except that he has to like travel back in time to become Joy Boy, meaning that Joy Boy was Luffy all along, which from a serious perspective kind of ruins that whole inherited will aspect of One Piece, but we're not at all interested in being serious today, especially when time travel does actually exist in the One Piece world and still has yet yet to thoroughly be explained. And look, if I don't think about it too much, I wouldn't mind an Avengers Endgame style scenario where the Straw Hats do travel back in time and we take a journey throughout the series. Sounds fun, it's probably a terrible idea, but it sounds fun, so why not? That Tama was, quote, confirmed to join the crew just because she mentioned Ace. That one went around for way too long. All right, this can be a pretty deep rabbit hole as well, quite surprisingly, but before we get to that, there is a fun thing about Tama because I'm pretty sure she's the only person aside from Luffy and I guess The Rock, who has worn the straw hat post time skip, which was done very casually, but this sort of thing has been used as foreshadowing before, like when Robin forcibly took the straw hat and plonked it on her head. But the thing about Tama is that this whole idea has been reignited thanks to Wano Act 3 spoiler character, and there's even more time travel-y stuff behind it, claiming that they are the same person or related in some way. So I really do think that this idea is far from dead in the fan base. Zoro innately avoiding stares because of what happened to what's her face. Yeah, that's right. The whole situation with good old face haver. What's the name? Kuina? Yeah, that's the one. I mean, I can imagine this. Actually, yeah, just think about it. The strongest person that Zoro knew at the time, the only one who he was unable to beat was ultimately overcome by a flight of stairs. So that should petrify Zoro because if stairs can beat Kuina, then surely stairs can destroy him as well. And what's worse is that stairs aren't even swordsmen, assumedly that is. So there's no reason whatsoever for Zoro to even challenge them. So I guess he just avoids them out of fear of instant defeat. There is nothing special about Blackbeard. Everyone can have two devil fruits, but no one has ever tried it out of fear. <laughs> so I love this idea much more than I should. Mostly because it would just be such a big F you to everyone who is painstakingly theory crafted about Blackbeard's unique and supernatural existence, able to somehow do the impossible and wield two devil fruits at the same time. And then the reality of the situation just turns out to be Blackbeard being some guy who was foolish enough to try eating two. And really the best source of information we have on this topic is that of a cow man who stated in chapter 385 that Grand Line scholars have already unraveled most of the mysteries behind how devil fruits function including their observation of someone who consumed two devil fruits, which apparently resulted in their body fracturing until there was nothing left of it. And just, hmm, I don't know though. This is all good and well, but I make a point of not trusting cows to convey important information to me. So let's put this whole idea on hold for now. Podgasti Rouge having the Gomu Gomu no Mi, and that's how she managed to keep Ace for 20 months. 
intriguing idea. And when I say intriguing, I mean in the context of insanity, of course. But you know what it does bring up though? What happens if a devil fruit user gets pregnant? Is the baby affected by their powers at any stage during the pregnancy? I mean, they are very much a part of the user's body, which might become especially weird if it was say a Logia user. I mean, if Crocodile got pregnant, would he be able to turn his unborn child into sand with him or not? And if not, then this could be very bad. Very bad indeed for good old Crocomum. Luffy should be immune to drowning in water because rubber doesn't sink. Yeah, look, I think you've got odor on this one. I mean, I wouldn't say immune to drowning because you can float face first in the water, but in theory, Luffy should not sink because water does not negate devil fruit powers like say the Yami Yami no Mi does. It just drains the strength of its users. With that said, I don't remember many situations where Luffy was submerged just on his own. Like it did happen back to back in Baratier and Along Park, but both times he was being weighed down by something. So who knows, maybe this isn't a theory or crazy at all. And maybe it's just a thing that is. That Laboon is actually the fifth Yonko. Sad face or neutral face. What is that face? In any case, now this is not a thing that is, mostly because of language. Basically what's being said here is that Laboon is the fifth, fourth emperor, because Yonko means four emperors. Although maybe I am being a bit too quick to judge here. Perhaps this commenter knows exactly what they're talking about by calling Laboon the fifth, fourth emperor, which I believe according to mathematics, would make Laboon the 20th emperor in total if he was the fifth, fourth. In which case I'm assuming Laboon would have risen to prominence right after 19th emperor Tonjit and right before the 21st Emperor for Afra. There are still some people not subscribed to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight to their sub box. Absurd, right? I'd like to say absurd, but sadly I can confirm that this theory is true. There are roughly 60% of you watching right now who are not subscribed and speaking of, let's see if we can change that, eh? Because earlier I challenged you to predict the answer to my wife's fan but not fan theory, which was in relation to why Nami's breasts perpetually grow. So is it because she was pregnant, because she hoards money within them, well, because of angry boob tension. Well, let's find out. Fan theory number mine. Nami has big boobs. That's not the theory. We just know it for a fact. And we also know that her boobs have grown over a period of time. That is also fact. What is not known is that Nami has been pregnant this entire time and holds the baby in out of spite to maintain her figure. Ah, and it makes the boobs go boink. And there you go, the answer was A, because Nami is pregnant and is hiding it in a very Rouge-esque manner, just in order to preserve her figure. So congrats to everyone who got it right, but for those of you who picked B or C, well, you know what you have to do now. This tantalizing red button is awaiting your click. Sunny Go is secretly the ancient weapon Pluton. Uh, yeah, so here's another idea that's recently been picking up steam again, which tells me that some other YouTuber has probably begun mentioning it quite a bit. The train of thought being that Frankie may have memorized the blueprints thanks to cyborgian features and use that knowledge to construct the Thousand Sunny, which is now an ancient weapon or a component of a reproduced Pluton. And if this were to be the case, then you know what would be coming up, right? A definite Pluton v Pluton showdown. Frankie engineered versus the old one still lurking somewhere in the world, more than likely Alabaster, I guess. The Tenryubito know that the world is ending and plan to blast off into space. Blast off. I guess. And you know, I suppose that very much explains their space suit chic. And it would be kind of cool for that to be the case, especially because it runs counter to the other prominent idea regarding these guys, which is that they came from space and settled on the One Piece planet. And just in case you're an anime only watcher, this idea is not actually too far fetched because the manga has very much confirmed that aliens do exist. And Elle went to the moon and saw a whole bunch of them. And it's heavily hinted that the sky citizens were not originally inhabitants of the One Piece planet. Bounties aren't being raised, it's just inflation. <laughs> oh wow. So I love this because this exact idea has now come up in I think two videos I'm preparing, one of which examines the economics of the One Piece world. So I'm much more excited about inflation than anyone anywhere should be. But it's very interesting because when you think back to older bounties like say Dory and Broggy, they don't seem like they're worth all that much, do they? I mean, 100 million berries each, that is nothing by our standards. I mean, Luffy is worth 15 times that. But you do need to remember that these bounties were issued over a century ago. And if we were to apply real world inflation over the last century, then their bounties would be something like 200 billion berries each in the modern day, which if anything is great evidence for why we should not apply real world standards to One Piece. The reason why Nami's bath towel came off was because Sanji removed it while he was invisible. Okay, so what you're saying is that Sanji, having experienced the sheer power of the happiness punch once before, strategically removed Nami's towel to have the attack hit Basil Hawkins. I mean, look, it's a flawless plan. The problem 
is that Sanji then inserted himself within the happiness punch trajectory, which would effectively be like loading heavy artillery and then just standing right in front of the, um, the shooty part. I don't actually know what it's called. Cannon? Shoot hole? In Nami's case, it's called tits. I once saw online one girl who said that Luffy, when he was little, he was put into a pool with rubber in a factory. Okay. I think the weirdest and craziest theory is that Luffy is adopted and is not Dragon's son. Wow, so if this were true, then it would take the entire concept of horrible parenting to a whole new level. I mean, as things are, it's pretty bad with Dragon being an absentee father and all of that, but just now imagine a situation where Dragon goes to the trouble of adopting Luffy just to promptly abandon Luffy. I mean, it's just making Luffy an orphan with extra steps, which I suppose is kind of what happened with Ace, actually. Garp sort of adopted him just to dump him on Dawn Island, but I guess at the very least, Garp did visit occasionally even if those visits were mostly to engage in child brutality. So you know what? No, maybe the whole dragon situation is better. That one piece is going to end before I die. Oh man, why are you gonna be like this? All right, let's be slightly real for just a second. This was and still is one of my bigger fears in this world, which I know is, yeah, it's a massively first world concern, but I definitely do not want to leave this existence before seeing the final page of the most incredible story ever told. And I'm sure that many of you feel the same way because that is just the power of One Piece. That Kate Curry will join Straw Hats, Kekwe. Yeah, I still see this one floating around quite a bit to this day. To be fair though, the whole X character will join the crew ideas very rarely die, even if they are just far away dreams. Because in the great words of Blackbeard, a man's dreams never die. This particular dream probably should though. Will Katakuri become an ally? Maybe. Will he join the crew? Nah. No one with a name that starts with P can die. The will of P, baby. Or actually, the will of P comma, baby, <laughs> not pee, baby. But look, when you're right, you're right. I mean, let's look at the history. We have Pell, we have Pound, we have Pagaya, we have Pedro. Oh, no, actually, I don't, I don't think we do have Pedro. Okay, well, this is getting awkward. So let's quickly move on. That Hunter Hunter will soon be on a consistent schedule. Okay, this has no chance of coming true whatsoever. And it's by far the worst theory I've heard all day. So bad that we need to just end the video right here and now. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.